Hello, and welcome back to part three of my story. This section will be what I call the music years. When I graduated from college, I was like 27. I started late and then it took me a long time to graduate. It's funny, side thought, I was so not ready to leave college. I actually stuck around like an extra semester. I ended up like taking some extra summer school classes or something because I was just not ready to leave. And all of my friends had already graduated. Hi guys. Um, I, uh, yeah, I was holding on. And I was on the fence about what to do next. I'd considered going to grad school to consider my theater education. But then I was like, you know what? The thing I want more than anything else is to play in a band and get a record deal. So I packed my bags and moved to Nashville, Tennessee. And for the next 10 plus years, I gave it, I can say this with total confidence, I gave it absolutely everything I had. It was nonstop struggle and sacrifice. We were so poor. I often look back at that time and just am in awe about how little money I lived on. <laughs> um, when we got here, and I still live in Nashville to this day, 20 years later, um, we rented this house. The whole house was like $400. And we split it three ways. So my rent was like $130. We It was an old drafty house and we'd heard the heat bill was insane. So we didn't turn the heat on in the winters. We would just like put a space heater in your room. <laughs> it was so cold. One morning the pipe burst and water was everywhere. Ugh, it was such a disaster. But we did that for a long time. And we got in a van and toured the country relentlessly. We all we were just very much like, this is what we want. This is what's going to happen. And we're not going to stop until we get it. And this weird thing happened that I'll probably reflect on for the rest of my life. Because it didn't work. We got close. We got really close a couple of times, but it just never quite stuck. And sometimes when I talk to one of those guys, we reminisce about what went wrong. We were a good looking band. We were tight. I do think there was something kind of energetically off. And if I were to have played a role in that off energy, it might have been that with each passing year, I got a little more into like an existential panic. Like... I'm sacrificing everything for this dream. What if it doesn't work? What if I turn 40 and I have nothing and all of this was a giant waste? And with each passing year, as 40 got closer, I got a little more in my head about everything. During this like decade time period, 10 to 13 years ish. There were lots of tangents. I'll, maybe the next section I'll tell you about all the little tangents over this decade. But for the most part, this decade was filled with nonstop trying to make a music career get off the ground. And it just didn't happen. And, you know, we tell ourselves that if you don't quit, if you never stop, eventually your dream will come true. And that didn't happen. And like I said, with each with, with each year, I got closer and closer. And then my worst fear became true. I became the man I feared I would become. I turned 40. I had no money. My music career never took off. It happened. And sometimes I look back and almost wonder, like, did I speak it into existence like I kind of knew the whole time it wasn't going to work and then it didn't work you know and 
I do look back and, and ask myself like, huh, did, did I just not have it? Why didn't it work, you know? Uh, as the story unfolds, I learned years later, I, I, you know, even in the past few years, I've started to understand what a massive learning road I'm on. And to be truthful, I didn't know it then, but I do now that um, I have some talents in music. And I've, I've, in more recent years, I've scored films, I wrote a musical, and I think in some ways I'm more suited to that. But now that I'm older and I know myself better, I actually think that just like playing in a band is not, doesn't play to my strengths as other th like things like storytelling and comedy and f script writing and, you know, things things where I can tell a story a little in a more bold way and not like a poetic abstract way, like a song. Does that make sense? I didn't know that at the time. Like now in this phase of, in my life, I'm like, oh, I'm actually like, uh, I shine brighter doing what I'm doing now. I didn't know that when I was 30. All I could see was that music dream. And if you remember the first couple parts of this, walking into the pursuit of this dream, my head was already on backwards. I'd come out of this sort of like place of like confusion, not knowing myself. And throughout my college years, I did resolve a lot of that conflict. But it's it's only been in more recent years that I look back and see how much longer that emotional journey was, longer than I realized. And even so, even when I was 30, I wasn't like thinking about all of that religious trauma. It still sort of like affected my trajectory. Does that make sense? Um... So, the, like I said, we got close, we broke up, we got back together, we broke up, we got close. It was just this, like, very tumultuous thing. And uh, toward the end of it, I started just recording musical projects by myself. And this is the last thing I'll say about this, I guess, in this section, in this, in this part of the story. This funny thing happened. Like when I was 18, people around me were like, go for it, chase your dreams. And then you get into your like your 20s and this sort of late 20s crisis happens for a lot of people where everyone's getting married or kind of settling into a career. You start to realize that you don't really quite know what you're doing, you know, like you thought you did, but then you don't. So like this, you entered this, I entered this era in my 20s where all my friends were getting married and having kids and everyone was like, oh, you're still, you're still making demo, demo tapes? Oh, are you going to get a job? <laughs> like I, I feel like I lost support and respect. At some point that tide shifted. Later, maybe in my 30s, a lot of friends became disenchanted with their life. Or, you know, the path they'd chosen. And I remember a lot of people saying, wow, like, you're really still doing it. After all this time, like, I feel like I played it safe. And you're, like, living a wild adventure. It's like this, you know, this sort of uh, ebb and flow of support and respect. And then, at some, and then I don't know, I, maybe that cycle is still happening. But I just stopped caring at some point. But I remember in that, that mid-30s wave of, like... I felt like I'd made wrong decisions and my friends were like, whoa, you're living a cool life. And I'm like, I'm broke. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe that was kind of a weird abstract place to, to end this section of the story, but there we are. Um, I think in the next part I might talk about during that decade, a couple of tangents I took. I worked on a cruise ship. I started messing with photography and filmmaking and did some theater projects. There were multiple moments where I was like, I have to quit doing this music thing. It's destroying my life. Before it was like all finally over when I was about 40.
I was sort of living in my car. When I was 40, I was kind of homeless. I'll tell all those stories in the next part. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.